off our communion Sunday here at North Esk Parish Church. It is so good to have you with us as we come to gather around our Lord's table. Today, we are also celebrating the Feast of Ascension, uh, and we'll be talking a bit more about that during our service today. I have a fair number of announcements for you this morning, so please just bear with me. Uh, the first is that we'll be taking a retiral offering this morning for Christian Aid, which for those of you who may be unfamiliar with their work, is a UK charity that fights global poverty. So as you leave today, there will be a stand uh, and collection plate over there, and hopefully one that way as well. So whatever way you're leaving the church today, you'll have an opportunity to throw in a couple of pennies for Christian aid. So thank you. Um, we got a lovely uh, thank you card from the Sea Cadets uh, thanking us for hosting their 70th anniversary service. Uh, and I just wanted to show it to all of you and I'll be putting it at the back so you can have a little look at it. Um, so that's for you to have a look at later. Um, a new reader list for the coming months is up at the back. So if you would like to read during one of our services or lead prayers or both, um, please see the list. It's on the right hand, your right hand side of the church at the back near the prayer book. I'm looking for submissions for our summer newsletter. Um, keep the congregation posted with what your church group is doing, share upcoming events, let us know what's been going on. Uh, please send me submissions or you can also hand write something to me if you're not on email. Um, and I'd like the submissions, if I could have them next by next Sunday, that would be really helpful. Um, and I'll tell you why next Sunday is ideal in a second. So uh, next Sunday, we're having our next family service and we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. Um, we're going to be hearing some other languages, I hope. So if you speak a language other than English, would you be able to get in touch with me by Tuesday of this week? Uh, and I might have something in store for you to do during our service. So let all of the children in your lives know that that is taking place. Invite them along. It's going to be a fun and engaging service because Pentecost is the birthday of the church. So there might be a little bit of a birthday celebration during the service. We will see. Uh, next, I want to let you know that I'm going to be a commissioner at this year's General Assembly, which will run from the 18th of May to the 23rd of May. And during this time, I'm essentially going to be out of office, um, but I will check my emails and my phone calls in the evenings should anything urgent arise. Day-to-day uh, -day matters, if you have anything, please give them to Sheila um, and she will take care of them. And if they're super, super urgent, I need to address them while I'm at General Assembly, she'll pass those on to me. Um, Tony is gonna to be taking our service on the 26th of May. Um, because I am entitled to one Sunday for being at General Assembly for my sins. Um, so I'm going to have that Sunday off. You won't see me, but Tony will be here to take the service. And this is also a reminder that that is marathon day. So if you get to the church by car, you'll want to leave fairly, especially if you're coming from the other side of the river, you'll want to either go around or leave with plenty of time to make sure that you get here and don't get snarled up in the traffic um, there. There will be a service that evening at 7 p.m. at St. Peter's um, for those who can't make it to church on Sunday morning because of the marathon. Uh, and that's being jointly led by St. Andrew's High and St. Peter's Episcopal Church. But all are welcome to join um, with that service. Um, and we'll announce those details again next week. I also want to tell you as part of General Assembly, I have been nominated by our presbytery to be on the committee to nominate the next moderator uh, and will hopefully be approved to do so during the assembly week and i look forward to telling you all about the riveting stuff that happens during general assembly i'm hoping for some excitement in addition to all the nitty-gritty we need to get through as a national church so that is coming up there will be a teze service on the 9th of June at 4.30 p.m. at St. Andrew's High. And if you are interested in taking part in some of the leadership of that service, we're not going to be having a rehearsal like we usually do um, beforehand, but we're going to 
meet at 3.30 on the day to do a run through of our music. So if you would like to participate in the Tesi service as a leader, and that just means helping with singing the songs or perhaps reading a line of a prayer, uh, let me know. We have next Sunday as well, we have our Musselboro Churches Together Songs of Praise service that will be at 7 p.m., I think I'm remembering that correctly, uh, at the Congregationalist Church. So come along for a really fun evening. Um, there will be hymns shared from across the churches in Musselboro Churches Together, and it will be a really wonderful way to celebrate Pentecost together. And that Sunday is also the final Sunday that we are taking collections for our joint united in service campaign with Musselboro Churches Together for women's aid. So if you have been meaning to bring something along, next Sunday is your last Sunday to do so. If there is somebody from the congregation who would be willing to take the items to women's aid, would you please be in touch with me because we are looking for somebody to run them up um, that way. And I think I've got an announcement here from Christine about the baking stall. I don't want to forget that. The baking stall held last Saturday, the 4th of May, raised 135 pounds and 70 pence for church funds. Many thanks to all who baked for the stall, to those who bought goods, and to the ladies who manned the stall. The next baking stall will be held on Saturday, the 1st of June, and it would be lovely to see you all. Thank you, Christine, for that, and well done for raising that money for church funds. We're very grateful to everybody who volunteers their baking skills and their stomachs to raise money for the church. Finally, uh, this is a reminder that there is a Kirk session meeting this Thursday, the 16th of May at 7 p.m. in the session house. Okay, that is all I think I have, unless I missed something, and I'm hoping I didn't. So let's take a moment of quiet to prepare our hearts to worship God. I invite you to stand as you are willing and able to join me in our call to worship that is based on Psalm 47. <laughs> Clap your hands, shout for joy. Our Lord reigns on the throne in glory. Sing praises, sing praises to God our King, sing praises. Let us praise God's holy name with our first hymn, I Come With Joy, a Child of God.
Lord Jesus Christ, risen and ascended, the word made flesh before all, in all, and beyond all, for the lives you have given us and the gift of life eternal, we praise you. For all the beauty, complexity, variety, and wonder of life that surrounds us, we praise you. For the opportunities, challenges, experiences, and achievements life offers, we praise you. For all the things we can think and do, see and touch, hear and feel, smell and taste, we praise you. Lord Jesus Christ, Lamb of the world, suffering servant, heavenly King, for the love that surrounds us each day through family and friends, the fellowship of the church, and the inner presence of your Holy Spirit, we praise you. For all the care, support, understanding, and friendship we enjoy, we praise you. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, for your greatness that fills the universe, your power and majesty, holiness and righteousness, justice and mercy, we praise you. For the way you have brought our world into existence and worked through human history and shared in our humanity, and the way you continue to build your kingdom, we praise you. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of all, forgive us that we have not lived our lives to the full. We have taken its wonders for granted. We have failed to appreciate its potential, and we have lost sight of the abundant eternal life you offer. For offering us life despite all that, we praise you. Forgive us that we have not fully responded to the love shown to us. We have allowed it to be poisoned through discord and division. We have starved it of nourishment through failing to offer our love in return. And we have closed our hearts to all you offer us. For loving us despite all of that, we praise you. Forgive us that we have not begun to grasp your lordship. We have kept, not kept our sense of awe and wonder before you. We have let our vision become stilted. And we have offered worship that is half-hearted, reflecting our weakness rather than your glory. For calling us despite all that, we praise you. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, open our hearts as we worship you to the fullness of life, the fullness of your love, and a fuller understanding of your greatness. And so may we truly confess you as King of kings and Lord of lords. For all you are, all you have done, and all you have yet to do, we praise you. We pray all this in the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, around this table, we will soon be reminded of our oneness in the body of Christ, made only possible through Christ himself, who offers all of us peace. So, to prepare ourselves to come to this table as brothers and sisters in Christ's body, let us share a sign of peace with those around us. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Share a sign of peace to those around you. Our next hymn is When I Receive the Peace of Christ.
So what is the right to meet? Sid and Joyce and Mary. training as scribal error, in which I gave Youngji the wrong hymn number, but the right first line of the hymn that we wanted to sing. So because she's so gifted and skilled, she is quick turning my mistake, and we will sing the hymn one more time to the, what is it, the Seven Songs of Mary? Yeah, excellent, very good. Let's try this again. We tried our best, we really did. We were very good. <laughs> There we go. And thank you so much, Youngji, for <laughs> fixing my mistake. I'd like to invite Elaine Ford to lead us in our prayers and reading. Our prayer for illumination. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth and faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Elaine. Our next hymn is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
after that, you all deserve a bit of a rest. <laughs> you sang that really, really well and strong. And it's warm in here, so make sure you're drinking water. And if you need to take off your jacket, take off your jacket. That was a lot. I kind of wish I could take my robe off, but I'm not going to. Would you please pray with me? Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Does anybody recognize this image? Up, up, up. I heard up, up, up. It's from the Disney Pixar film, Up. And let me tell you a little bit about Up as a film. It's the story of a gentleman named Carl Fredrickson, who is a widowed pensioner who goes on a later in life and larger than life adventure. After losing his beloved wife, Ellie, once a sweet, kind, and fun-loving man, Carl becomes the neighborhood curmudgeon, notoriously hard-hearted and slamming doors in anybody's face who comes knocking. When his neighborhood begins to get redeveloped all around him, and all of the houses around him are bought up and turned into big skyscrapers, his little house just sadly dwells in the midst of all of this change. And after he unintentionally injures a construction worker on the site next to his house, the courts declare Carl to be a public menace. And they insist that he is moved into an assisted living facility. And not one for taking things lying down, Carl, who is a retired balloon salesman, ties hundreds of helium balloons to his house and takes his house up, as you can see, on an adventure to the marvelous Paradise Falls in South America to keep a long-standing yet unfulfilled promise to his late wife. Carl, along with his neighbor and who is also a wilderness explorer scout, Russell, a talking dog named Doug, which, you know, we can all get behind here in Scotland, and a giant bird called Kevin, they all go on a journey with Carl to rediscover the adventure and fun of life that can be found even after the loved ones that we have lost leave us. Carl's ascension, his up with his multicolored balloons, leads him to experience the fullness of life that he had forgotten was there for him to have. And today, we are celebrating Ascension Day, the day, to put it somewhat playfully, that Jesus goes up. A day that marks the end of Jesus' time on earth in his resurrected form after those 40 days we sung about. He's spent time with his disciples, sharing with them the good news of his conquering over death. But now it is time for him to return to God, to sit in glory over heaven and earth. It's time to leave the disciples to get on with the work that they have been trained and called to do. Now, you wouldn't be blamed for missing the ascension in our reading from Luke's gospel because it only takes up about half a verse. Blink, and you might have missed it. Although the act of ascending only takes up half a verse, our passage this morning from Luke is all about why the ascension matters, what it means and the transformation that can happen all because Jesus goes up. And I want to take a look for a moment at that word up. We've kind of internalized this idea, haven't we, that heaven is up. You see it at award shows or sporting events when people want to thank God for their award or for that goal that they scored. What do they do? They kind of, right? They do that, right? So they point up. They thank God by pointing up. It's this thanksgiving and acknowledgement to God because God is somehow up there. But we know that God isn't physically up because we know a bit more about the universe that we live in. We know that if you go up, you get space. You get infinite space in the universe and beyond. So although the passage says carried up 
to heaven. We're not talking about physical space that we can conceptualize, although it might be easier for us to think of it that way because it is so hard to, to conceptualize. But God is, well, everywhere. In Jesus' ascension, his going up, his physical body leaves the mortal plane of existence and he returns to the divine. To be seated, as we say in the Apostles' Creed, as we were reminded in our passage from Ephesians, at the right hand of the Father, where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Jesus is lifted up to be with God the creator in glory, to take his rightful place as king of kings and lord of lords over whole, the whole of creation. So up is less a specific space and more about a state of being. When we ask God to lift us up, we don't usually mean off the ground, although that can also happen. We mean lift our spirits Bring us out of the turmoil or trouble or difficulty that we are going through. We want to experience the glory of God alongside Jesus in his ascension. To experience that fullness of life that God offers all of us. And in our passage this morning, there are three ups that can help us understand what Jesus wanted us to take away from his ascension. And how we can also be raised up with him. The first up is that Jesus asks us to listen up. Listen up to what God is doing. Jesus says to his disciples, these are the words that I spoke to you. In other words, listen up. And then the Bible says that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He talks them through salvation history. Remember God's presence with our ancestors, the Israelites, releasing them from bondage in Egypt and giving them the law, a way to live and be with God. And then remember the prophets who spoke about God's judgment, but also God's mercy when we neglected the law and sought our own selfish ways. And then remember the Psalms, which reflect God's love and God's tenderness towards us, even in our most troubled moments. Remember what's written about the Messiah. He's to suffer and rise from the dead for the forgiveness not of just Israel, but of all the nations. You are witnesses to these things, Jesus tells his disciples. You are part of this story. You've seen the Messiah suffer and rise, and now it's your turn to take the story forward. Listen to what God has been saying to God's people all along. And we too, who are gathered here, are also called to listen, to hear scripture, to hear God speaking to us through it, to be reminded of the story of our salvation that we are also a part of, and to listen to God working in our own lives. Being a Christian is not a passive life. It is a life of actively listening, discerning the voice of God in the midst of our lives, listening for the will of God inviting us forward, and going where the Spirit leads us to ensure that the good news of God is heard, not just here in this church, but in our whole community and the world. So how can we listen up better? How can we be better listeners to what God is asking us as individuals and as a church? And how can we listen up to those in our community who are outside the church or on the fringes of the church? Jesus asks us to listen up. The second thing that Jesus asks us is to look up, look up to God. Jesus has ascended. He's not here anymore. He's no longer physically present to us as he was with the disciples. But that's not bad news, that's good news. Why? Because Jesus now is everywhere. Jesus can be in every time and every place. 
Jesus foreshadows to his disciples the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and tells his disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they have been clothed with power from on high. Look up to God. Wait for the Spirit to come. We know that it is that power from on high, that infusion of the Holy Spirit into those disciples that equips them and energizes them to go and tell others about that good news that they have heard and to get others to listen up to what God is doing. But they can't do that until they receive that power from God. And we are encouraged to look up to God. Again, that up-down imagery. We're not physically left staring up at the sky. We'd never get anything done if we did that. That would be awfully silly. We are turning our hearts to God, who we know is present with us always. We are listening to what God is saying to us. We are looking out for the Spirit to renew and enliven us each and every day so that we can be equipped to share the good news with others. We do not do that work of God by our own strength and energy, but we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit, who comes to us from God's very self to be with us wherever we are. So how do you turn to God? How do you turn your heart to God in your life? What are the things that you do that get you excited and energized to share God's love with other people? Might that be the Holy Spirit working in you? Jesus asks us, to look up. And finally, Jesus asks us to raise up. Raise up our hands, our hearts, our spirits in blessing. The final image that Jesus' disciples have of him, that any of us have of him, is the ascension. Before he ascended, Jesus raises his hands up, like that image on the screen. He raises his hands up to bless his disciples. And as he is ascending, the Bible tells us that his hands remain raised in blessing. He is continuing to ceaselessly bless them as he goes up, because the blessing of God has no end. It is Jesus' blessing upon those disciples that makes it possible for them to go and share the gospel in the face of great hardship and uncertainty. Jesus is no longer there. They no longer have him to fall back on when they get into trouble. And yet, they do not go to the ends of the earth to share God's love alone or ill-equipped because Jesus' blessing goes with them. So there is a real sense that as Jesus returns to God the Father, that he goes blessing all of us continually. Jesus raising his hands to bless us in every time and place, to bless all of us right now. Jesus' hands are raised to bless us right now. Even though he is gone from their sights, the disciples know that Jesus' blessing remains with them always. And we too can have that confidence, that faith, that our lives are being constantly blessed by Christ. And we are blessed so that we can then raise our hands up in blessing others, bringing comfort, speaking of compassion, showing forgiveness, embodying justice, so that everyone may be raised up with Christ and experience the glory of God. So how are you raising your hands up in blessing? What are the things that you do that embody Jesus' blessing to others? Where might God be inviting you to raise up your heart to those in need? I'm just going to briefly pause so we can take care of someone in our congregation.
We have compassion right in front of us happening right now. A loving family of a church caring for one another right now. This is the Holy Spirit right now in our midst. I'm going to continue and finish the sermon because I'm nearly done. Um, in a few moments, we're going to come to this table and we will take bread and wine and at this table, we believe that we are lifted up to God. We believe that a mysterious and marvelous thing happens when we come together and remember all that Jesus has done for us and partake in this meal that we, in some way, we ascend to God to join in a foretaste of a heavenly feast that God has prepared for all of us. Here we come to listen to what Jesus has done for us, to look for the Holy Spirit's present presence upon us, and to receive the blessing that Jesus gives us in raised hands so that we are fed and spiritually nourished to go out into the world and bless others. So let us listen up, look up, raise up. Maybe so for you, maybe so for me, maybe so for all of us. Amen. We sing our communion hymn, Ye Gates.
us remember the words that the Lord Jesus himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. We will now collect our offering. you to place the offering on the organ. Giving God, we give you thanks and praise for all your gifts to us. We know that you are the source of every good thing. Light and love come from you. You have created us and you continue to breathe life into us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you have given us so much. And it is because we recognize the gifts you have given to us that we now give to the work of your kingdom. We dedicate this offering to the work of your kingdom here on earth. May this collection be used wisely and diligently that your love may be known widely. As we dedicate this offering, we offer ourselves to you. For these gifts of money are but tokens of ourselves. Take and use us, that our hands may reach out in service, our feet may walk the difficult path of reconciliation, and that our words may be words of peace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able in this moment to join us in declaring our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Throughout our communion, there are responses which you are welcome to join in, and they will appear on the screen. Um, And if you've not been with us for a while or not been with us before, our bread is gluten-free and our wine is grape juice. Friends, this table is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. This table does not belong to an elite few. It doesn't belong to North Esk Parish Church or the Church of Scotland. It is our Lord's table. And it is our Lord who invites us all to come, to eat, to join with him. It is prepared for all those who love him and all those who want to love him more. So come. You who have much faith, and come you who might have just a little today. Come you who have been to the table often, 
And come, you who have not been here for a long time. Come, you who have tried to follow him. And come, all of us who have failed. Come, not because it is I who invite you, but because it is our Lord Jesus who invites us all. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right that we give you all thanks and praise, holy and loving God, for you created the earth and the sea. You formed the land and gathered the waters. Rain, light, dirt, you made them. Grain and grape, you caused them to grow. When your people wandered in the desert, you gave them manna, bread enough for each day. You provided drink from a rock. Over and over again, you faithfully provided. And even now, you continue to provide. When we fail, you don't fail us. When we are unfaithful, you are faithful still. In the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In Jesus, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, broke bread with outcasts, and proclaimed the good news of your upside-down kingdom, where the first are last and the last are first. Dying on the cross, Jesus gave himself for the life of the world, and rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory, and will come again to make all things new. Remembering your acts of grace and provision in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine, and we joyfully celebrate his dying and his rising, even as we await for his return. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast in every time and place. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in your hurting and hungry world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And with the confidence of the children of God, we pray together again the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. And in the same way, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink of it. 
Remember me. Friends, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the children of God. Bread for the journey, drink for the way. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
having shared in this table, in this feast, in being lifted up in Jesus, we now bring our prayers for the world. And I'd like to invite Elaine, if she can, to come up and lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. You are free, Lord. Your ascension has set you free. Free to be here with us now in our worship and fellowship. And free to be with us always, for in your freedom you have bound yourself to us with a promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of time. At the Lord's table you have fed us and freed us to be the people you have called us to be, a people reconciled to you and to one another. And we pray that we might live into that freedom each and every day. We pray for our church, North Esk, for all those that call this place their spiritual home and for our parish and community. May we be at one with one another, setting aside our differences and disagreements, united in Christ's body, and forgiving one another without condition. This Christian Aid Week, we ask that you would help us to hear the voices of those enduring extreme poverty Show us how compassion for others can bring healing and fullness of life for all. Help us to understand that we are one through your love, for every human being is loved by you beyond measure. Loving God, you call on us to build your kingdom of justice, mercy and truth. It isn't a task for the faint-hearted. When we lose our sense of purpose, fill us with faith. When we doubt or throw up our hands in despair, fill us with hope. When we pass by our neighbour as though we did not know them, fill us with the love that turns us back and takes us to their aid. We pray, Lord, for those who need to feel you close, who need the assurance of your love, the encouragement of your spirit. We pray for those who are persecuted, who are discriminated against, who are mocked because of their faith or race or colour or sexuality. We pray for those who are imprisoned, who are tortured, who are exiled because they have fought, struggled and spoken out for the rights of their people. We pray for those who are destitute, who are hungry, who are refugees because of the selfishness and apathy of the world. We pray for those who are filled with guilt, who are broken hearted, who are perplexed because a relationship has gone wrong. Pray for those who are feeling fed up who are in discomfort, who are afraid because they are ill in body, in mind or spirit. We pray for those who are numbed, who are angry, who are desolate because they have been bereaved. We pray for those caught up in war and violence and hatred especially the innocent victims of these evils. We pray for those experiencing financial turmoil, for those who have lost jobs, those who struggle to pay bills and provide for their families. We pray for those known to our congregation 
whom we now name Helen. And we take a moment of silence to lift up to God our own prayers today. So be with us all, Lord, in our daily struggles as we seek to follow you. Be with us all, Lord, in our periods of doubt and despair and in our times of happiness, health and loving. Be with us all, Lord, until that time when in your kingdom of love, our joy will know no end. Amen. Thank you, Elaine. We sing our final hymn, Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning.
as we go from this place, remember to listen up, to look up, and to raise up. Listen up, look up, raise up. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.